Here we are in Brighton. This is the 33rd march we've had in towns and cities across this country. It's the biggest rolling campaign for any wildlife protection cause in Europe in decades. We're here again, just over two years since we last marched through this town because the badger colour has not gone away. The threat to our badgers, if anything, is increasing. We're now faced with an extension of this mad policy that has no scientific validity, that's terribly cruel, and has cost so far over £23 million, around £6,500 per badger killed. So we're really here now to re-engage with the people of Brighton, to wake the politicians up to the fact that we've not gone away. We remain very angry. We're going to continue to fight this terrible policy in towns and cities across this country. Today we're going to have hundreds of people with us. It's a beautiful day. We're going to get lots of people through the city centre listening to what we have to say, why it is that we should stand up for our wildlife and not allow industry and political short-term interests to destroy it. First of all, John Cooper is going to speak to us. John Cooper, keep the QC. Um, he's given me a list of all the things that he's, that he's been up to. Uh, but today, uh, he's going to be uh, speaking on behalf of Save Me. Here's John. It's very important, particularly now, we make it very clear that we are not going away. Yes. And a turnout such as this now, this morning, is a real indication to those who think the issue has gone away and those who think that we have gone away. That is not the case. And can I just say this for anyone else that may be listening? This is just for starters. My work as a lawyer in the law courts we deal with evidence and if you want to prove your case present evidence the problem with those that say badger culling is the answer is that they're afraid to present the evidence because if they presented the evidence they would be able to say actually there is no evidence very few of the badgers actually killed and some of them brutally killed some of them that take over five minutes to die. The majority, if not all, of those poor creatures were not even tested for bovine TV. Because we know, and they know, and anyone listening to what's going on here should know, guess what? They won't have it. So if you're not afraid of the evidence I say to our opponents, if you're not afraid of the truth, actually test the situation. Test what you're doing, test what you're proposing, you carry on doing, and that's what today's about. It's not just about what's being done, it's about what is proposed to be done. Well then, tell the country, tell the people exactly what the results of your inquiries, of your testing is. And if you've got the courage to do that, I say, your argument will die as much as you want the innocent creatures. You actually say cause this problem equally to die. If you can help, come and see us and please volunteer. We desperately need more people out there. Being out there will save lives. It will save lives. Um, somebody's going to speak now that knows all about that. Um, she's been an activist now for a good many years uh, and she's going to uh, tell us what it's like. Uh, here's Sarah. Hi, my name is Sarah and I've spent a lot of my time during the last three autumns with my friends in the coal zones helping to protect badgers. Even though I actually have a business to run and companion animals and a family and I certainly have plenty of other things I'd rather be doing. There have been nearly 4,000 badgers killed so far. 4,000 pointless, painful deaths. It's not an easy thing to think about, but without our efforts, there would have been a lot more. And I think we've done a remarkable job so far, but we are facing further rollout of the cull and we need more help. I started campaigning against the badger cull more than four years ago because I felt the whole thing was so wrong, so misguided and cruel, that I felt sure that it could be stopped. I knew badgers were a protected species, and I felt that we, the British people, love our badgers, and I did, did not believe that the people would accept the wholesale slaughter of an iconic protected animal. 
and in that belief I was right, but I was also wrong. It's true that the majority of the population, if asked to tick a box, will say that they oppose the badger call. And over 300,000 people signed the e-petition against it. And hundreds of thousands have contacted their MPs or aired their concerns in newspapers or social media. And tens of thousands of people have been on demos against the cull. I'm certainly not knocking all these other ways we can and should oppose the cull. They're all important. But if I was a badger in the killing fields of Somerset or Gloucestershire or Dorset last autumn, I would have got cold comfort from all of that. It's just not enough. The badgers need more than that. The badgers need direct action. The badgers need boots in fields. The only thing that kept badgers alive once the shooters were out with their guns was the presence of a few hundred people who cared. The ones out of all the millions who opposed the coal, who actually cared enough to get off their backsides and go out into the coal zones, as is their right, and protect the badgers by being there so that the shooters cannot shoot. Everyone who wants to help is welcome in the coal zones. We've had many hundreds of people come and help us and they come from all walks of life, all ages and all abilities and all over the country. The good news is that if you think you live too far from the zones to help, you don't. We've had people come from France, Mallorca, Belgium, the United States to help protect our wildlife. And I'm proud to say that there have been many, many people from this area playing an active role in all three coal zones since the coal started. Please. Save our badgers! Stop the coal! Save our badgers! Stop the coal! Stop the coal! Is that any better? Yeah. Okay. I've been involved in this issue for a long time, campaigning on this issue. I've also been out with the Wounded Badger Patrols in Gloucestershire over the past two or three years. As the, the lady who spoke earlier said, those, uh, those um, patrols, those local groups are really, really amazing. So do get down there and support them if you possibly can. Now, as many of you well know, Born Free Foundation, the organisation I work for, was founded by the actress Virginia McKenna and her husband, and they starred in the film Born Free, which was released 50 years ago this year. It's a big year for our charity. Virginia would have loved to have been here today. Unfortunately, she can't, but she feels passionately about this issue, and she's passionately opposed to this badger call, and she's asked me to read a short statement, which I'll, I'll do just now. So this is from Virgi Virginia McKenna. Not only does there seem to be no logic in possibly extending the badger cull to Sussex or any other county for that matter, but this plan also means the decision makers have disregarded the suffering caused to the badgers by the culling methods used. Little by little, wild creatures are being eliminated from nature. It would seem that the authorities never consider what wild animals contribute to the balance of the natural world. They waste thousands, millions of pounds on this slaughter as if there was no alternative to defeat the transmission of TB to cattle. Of course, there is an alternative, and one of the alternatives is vaccination. The choice is life for all, not death. That's from Virginia McKenna, and she would have loved to have been here today with us. Now, no one denies, least of all me, that bovine TB is a big issue for farmers. In 2014, 33,000 cattle were slaughtered prematurely as a result of bovine TB, and the controlling the disease has cost about £500 million to the taxpayer over the last 10 years. 
and an outbreak cost an individual farmer thousands of pounds, notwithstanding all the other impacts on his business and the emotional impacts and so on and so on. Most of these costs are associated not with the effects of the disease itself, but they're associated with how we go about trying to control it. This situation has come about not because of badgers, as many in the government and the National Farmers Union would have you believe, but because of inadequate controls and poor industry practices over many years. Just because the costs of cattle TB are high is not an excuse for laying the blame on innocent wild animals. Ladies and gentlemen, in trying to defend this policy, the government and the National Farmers Union will say you can't get TB under control without dealing with the reservoir in badgers. This is not true. The only real piece of science designed to look at the impact of killing badgers on TB was the so-called randomised badger culling trial. That took place over a period of 10 years, cost £50 million, and it cost 11,000 badgers their lives. And the conclusion of the scientists who set up and, and evaluated that trial was that badger culling can make no meaningful contribution to the control of TB in cattle in Britain. Even our chief vet, who's a big supporter of the culls, and I'll come to him in a minute, admits it's impossible to draw any conclusions. And there's even some evidence that cattle TB in Dorset, where they culled last autumn for the first time, has been going up since as many scientists predicted it would if you start disturbing badgers and uh, killing badgers randomly and causing the surviving badgers to roam around uh, in a panic and spread the disease to more of their kin. And let's not forget that illegal badger persecution has increased within and around the cull zones, something the government and the National Farmers Union doesn't seem to be taking very seriously. And they will say, we need to use all the tools in the box. You'll hear this said a lot. What an absurd lot of nonsense. You don't use all the tools in the box. You, do, you use the tools that work. And you use the tools that don't involve the wholesale slaughter of our wildlife. Killing badgers should never be a tool for controlling TB in cattle. The messaging from the government and the National Farmers Union is nothing more and nothing less than nonsense. A lot of folk uh, I speak to are quite here, uh, surprised to hear that my profession, my lot, the veterinary profession, has played a big part in the development and promotion of this badger culling policy. Remember, badger culling is supported by individual vets who seem to think they should do whatever their farm clients ask of them. It's supported by the British Veterinary Association, which is heavily influenced by vested interests within the profession and the farming industry. And it's supported by our chief government vet and his staff, presumably because their jobs depend on it. Now, I'm often asked why vets, who above all else should be looking out for the welfare of animals, would support the wholesale and unjustified slaughter of badger, badgers. The problem here is that many vets simply don't understand the science behind the control of TB in cattle. Many vets have vested interests. And a lot of vets will also claim that the welfare of badgers and other wild animals is nothing to do with them because these animals aren't directly under their care. Well, let me say this about my profession. Before supporting badger culls, or for that matter, any harmful wildlife interventions, vets and their professional bodies, like the British Veterinary Association, had better be damn sure there will be a substantial and guaranteed benefit They'd better be damn sure there's no alternative, and they'd better be damn sure the methods that are going to that are going to be used are humane, and they'd better be absolutely confident that there won't be any other consequences for animal welfare like increased illegal persecution. Ladies and gentlemen, these badger culls fail on all of these counts, and the veterinary profession has no business supporting them. The Badger Army is back as strong as ever here in Brighton. Yeah! And now, 
33 marches in towns and cities from London to Leeds to Brighton to Stratford-upon-Avon to Bristol to Dorchester, all across this country. This is the biggest, biggest wildlife campaign we've seen in Europe, not just in the UK, in decades. It's brought thousands of people together. It's generated huge amounts of media and political pressure. And it brought about the downfall of the most arrogant, incompetent Secretary of State ever for the environment, Owen Patterson. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And why, why are we still so angry and why are we still marching on the streets all these years later? It's because of the ignorance, corruption and greed that is allowing a budget call policy to go on in this country that has no scientific validity, that is terribly cruel and is costing an absolute fortune. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we put out a press release this week, the Badger Trust. Because there were two things that were really annoying us, as it's annoying many people in the wildlife conservation and political world at the moment. Firstly, the cost of this cull is absolutely disgraceful. We have spent the best part of £25 million, £25 million, just killing over 4,000 badgers in this country in small areas of three counties over the last three years. Do any of you, any of you believe that's a good spend of public money? It works out at about six and a half thousand pounds a badger, but it doesn't stop there. Because when this culling policy was initiated by this government as a coalition in 2012, they said this was going to be largely paid by the farmer. I'm telling you now, the farmers are hardly paying anything for this. It's you, all of us, in our pockets that are paying for this. DEFRA's budget as a department has been cut by 50% in the last five years. We've had terrible flooding that's putting people's lives at risk, where the priorities must now be spent in terms of their money, and yet they're still wasting huge amounts, killing badgers, most of which are completely healthy, none of which they've tested for TB. Is that a national disgrace? Yes! And not only that, when we met Liz Truss back in April last year, and we sat down with her and said, your crazy culling policy has demonised badgers, has created a state of fear in the mind of farmers, and has fed huge levels of persecution. The police are now indicating that they believe over 10,000 badgers, 10,000 badgers a year, are killed by illegal persecution in this country. And I'll tell you, they're killed by budget baiters, they're killed by farmers, they're killed by landowners, they're killed by property developers, they're killed by gamekeepers, they're killed by huntmasters. Wherever you go, badgers are skinned, gassed, shot, and horribly treated in this country. Do any of you expect that should still be able to continue for a protected species, do you? No! We're going to see a species that's protected in this country, that's lived here for half a million years, disappear from large parts of this country. And this is the thin end of the wedge. What we're talking about here is that farming and economic policy has a priority over wildlife protection. They'll come for our badgers today. They'll be coming for our otters and our beavers and our birds of prey next. Yeah. We will have nothing left. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I will say this to the media. You must continue to work to bring balance, and if you don't, and I'm concerned that the BBC are going to put out a programme on Sunday that is not going to be balanced, we will be complaining directly to the Director General on that point. We will not let them go. But we're not going quiet. We're not going anywhere. This is a caring, compassionate movement that has woken up the world. And we heard earlier on that it isn't just about this march and this movement here. Yes, we've been outside the High Court. Yes, we've had petitions. But let's not forget about what's going on in the fields. Because at the end of the day, what we're seeing out there is unique. There is nothing like it anywhere else in the world. There is nowhere in my view that people would go into the fields on cold, dark nights to put themselves between gunmen and badgers to protect them. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes me proud to be British. And that's why we must continue to mobilize. We must continue to get out there. As these coals expand, we must go where the coals go. We must organize ourselves into wounded badger patrols and action patrols and actually really take steps to try and ensure that we will be heard and seen, and we will be vigilant because we're bearing witness to cruelty. Just as on other campaigns like I'm involved with in Taji Cove at the moment, where we've got people standing, despite the intimidation and threats of the Japanese government, watching the destruction of beautiful dolphins. It's exactly the same here for badgers. We must bear witness to this madness. We must let the world know that they won't get away with this. It's absolutely important that we do that. And we're making progress. This is a big challenge. This is a fight that is for the survival of a species. You might think three or four years is a long time. Well, it's nothing when these animals have lived for half a million years. What you're doing today will make this difference. It will rather decide the fate of our wildlife or we'll all be indifferent, go away and forget about it. And before we know it, we'll all wake up and it'll all be gone. And your children won't be able to benefit from this anymore. And all the wonders that the natural world brings us. So we must keep fighting. We must keep working together. 
and we must keep mobilising and supporting each other because it's going to be so important that we achieve that. Save our badges! Save our badges! Save our badges! Save our badges! Save our badges. Save our badges.